everybody, John, Lake Erie Chestnuts. Middle of late July, got chestnuts setting. Just finished doing some brush hogging on the old John Deere 5065E with our six foot Frontier mower. And uh, we'll work on getting the, the fine cutting done later, but orchard's looking good. Beautiful, beautiful day. This tree, I don't know how tall this tractor is, but it's, I'm probably standing at 12 foot and it's got a good oh, eight, 10 foot on me. It's got quite a few burrs set on it. This was a tree that's Ching parenthood parentage, pure Chinese, quite a few nuts or at least burrs. We'll see if they're fertilized or not as they swell up and get later in the season. But quite a few multiple burrs next to each other and a few singles. Just beautiful tree. This tree probably is spending its last season in the tube. We'll step down toward it. This tree is starting to bust at the seams. And I'm going to let it sit in the tube one more season for the, to protect it from the deer. And you can see it's already starting to split the tube. They're designed to do that. And uh, ultimately, I'll give it a little breathing room there. Ultimately, these tree will be opened up and I'll let it breathe a little. And paint the trunk to keep it from getting sun scald. That's the next problem that the trunk can get sunburned if you don't protect it. Well, let's get a good look at one of the burrs here. I saw a couple of them on this branch. I'll reach up as high as I can reach there. And uh, you see several burrs right in there. You can see a little bit of remaining blossom. Kind of neat to see. This tree was a little slow to produce even flowers, uh, but obviously it put a lot of growth. And I didn't know if that was due to me fertilizing it, that was doing more vegetative growth as opposed to production. But I skipped two years ago fertilizing. I didn't like the way it looked because it looked kind of less deep green. Last year I did fertilize it and then this year I decided not to fertilize any of them. Uh, and so some of the trees look a little lighter green than I'm used to seeing, but I'm sure that's because I'm used to seeing this artificially fertilized tree, but this tree is really deep green still. I didn't fertilize it this year, but really healthy looking tree. You can see the shade it's casting as we're finishing up mowing here at about 4 p.m., 4.30 p.m. This six foot mower, I got the chains on it. It's the Frontier RC 2072. That's a John Deere product. And then the loader, I just leave it on. I don't take it off, but that tractor will do pretty much anything I want to do on this property. I'm going to show you a couple trees to just see how vertical some of them grow. This one is growing up, has a nice branching stature, but is going vertical, really vertical. It's got a couple leaders there. And again, on apples, you would take out the leader most often and spread it out, have an open center or something like that. But chestnuts, you just let them go. There is a more intensive way where you can prune them. Uh, but then here's a tree that just goes vertically up. So the last one had that split and had two main leaders. This one has just one leader and it is tall. This tree's 20 foot tall. Uh, unfortunately, the, the tie I put for the identification right at the thing snapped off when the tie snapped off. So this tree's got a permanent lean. I'm just gonna leave it that way. Uh, but I do have written down what type of tree that is. I don't have, if I can think about it, I'll put it on this video. But we've left habitat in the middle and we have all sorts of species of 
butterfly. You can see an orange butterfly there working. Several black butterflies. Got that little dot on them. Just beautiful. Beautiful. See the dots on his wings? Any of you butterfly aficionados know what that one is? I don't. I'm sure I could look it up. But we have tons of monarchs mating right now. And uh, they're flying around. At least either that or they're carrying their wounded because one seems to be upside down and the other one seems to be flying along with it. So either a bunch of wounded monarchs and they're marines and they're never leaving their wounded buddies behind or there's some uh, babies on the way. And we see them on all sorts of flowers. We have a lot of these black-eyed Susans just naturally occurring here. We see them on clover, uh, the Queen Anne's lace. I kind of see them on pretty much everything. But a beautiful, beautiful day in the orchard. We'll get this all trimmed up over the next week or two as we now are in full-on maintenance of this and getting the, fo the floor cut down lower as we anticipate a little bit of an increased harvest as we get to where all the trees are more spreading and dropping than the burrs we'll get to where we cut this lower and lower right now we're cutting it at about four inches but we'll cut this lower and lower as time goes on got a monarch here flying around this one just floating along And I don't know if you remember last year, we had hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of monarchs gathering in the fall. And uh, I feel like that's a direct reflection of not mowing everything and making the whole thing look like a lawn. You know, I could make it all look like this and wouldn't have to keep close to the trees as much. I could spray, but I like seeing all the the butterflies and I've got some videos of turkey poults you'll barely be able to see them I can show a little video here of a few turkey poults walking by many of you have probably been wondering about the English white oak this is one that's I don't know 12 14 foot tall there's a buddy that's 10 foot tall it's got several buddies down there growing and then a few over here uh, that first batch has reached its seven years where I had been told that you could have acorns and several people have grown them and done that. And I don't know if it's due to the pressure of the last three years. They've gotten a ton of pressure from those stupid gypsy moth caterpillars. And I don't know if that affected them, but they do not have acorns in their seventh year. This is a original chestnut that I planted. And it got beat up a couple times by deer. And I've posted pictures of this before. It does have some blossoms, but it's kind of all by itself over here. So I don't know if it's getting enough pollen over here that it can set a nut. But it's got two buddies. One died of blight. These were bought from Real Tree Nursery Dunstan's. Uh, the the original this one uh, but I got some buddies down here growing that I grew from seed in the next couple years we'll be producing pollen got some bees working here different kinds of bees really cool to watch
one on pretty much every flower of this Canadian thistle, which is a weed. But I don't mind an occasional weed. We're not looking for perfection and I love seeing the, the insect life. And here's our oats. You can see this oat field looks great. This oats has beans in it that were eaten pretty heavy until the oats really started crawling. Now it lets the beans gave initial food. Now the oats carry the deer's head up so it can't, it doesn't want to get down in there and eat as much. That lets the soybeans grow. Then they'll be able to blossom, set some pods. The oats will die off and the sun will start coming back to the soybean. The deer will go eat some pods. Here we go with our first nuts on our hazelnut trees. Pretty cool. Really cool. Got several clusters of them. Got three down here. Got one up there. Several over here. So really excited about this. You can see some of the hazelnuts just really growing tall. See some more seeds here. And I'm not sure that the tall one even set any nuts, but it's growing tall. I expect to see a lot of blossoms on that next year. Well, I thought you'd enjoy seeing an update of the chestnuts, seeing the how the burrs are starting to develop, looking at the newly mown orchard. It's not complete, but in the next week, we'll should have it ship shape with the trimming around the trees, the finer uh, trimming done around, and then one more mow, and we'll have it beaten the shape for our every two week mowing for the rest of the season. 
show me what you're doing. If you see something I'm doing wrong, I want to hear about it. And if you know what kind of butterfly that was, let me know in the comments. Remember, if you like this stuff, like and subscribe. That really helps us out, gets this information out to others, and maybe inspire some future chestnut growers. Remember, if you're not growing, well, some guy, one of my friends said, I should call myself Dr. Chestnut because I am a doctor and I like chestnuts. But I'm not a PhD, I'm not an agroforestry, I'm not a forest crop or a crop agricultural scientist. But anyway, today, Dr. Chestnut reminding you, if you're not growing, you're dying. Thanks for watching us here at Lake Geary Chestnuts.